Well, people, we're starting to head into late June. The official start of summer two days away, Friday at 9.42 p.m. Central. Oddly enough, the earliest sunrise has already happened. Around June 15th, the latest sunset, that's going to be next week around June 26th. That's due to the shift of solar noon. But the longest day still on the solstice. Some of the first North American tropical cyclone problems of 2025 shaping up with Hurricane Eric. It is a high-end Category 2 storm, winds 110 miles an hour. As you can see here, it's expected to make landfall as a high-end Category 3 hurricane this evening west of Puerto Escondido. We could see wind, mudslide, flood problems all through western Oaxaca and Guerrero State into the mountains south of Mexico City and Puebla. There's a look at it on the infrared imagery. It is moving northwest at about 10 miles an hour, and it will be coming on shore in this area later this evening. Haven't had time to do a Dvorak-type workup, but uh, we'll try to do that in the uh, summer ahead as we get these systems closer to the U.S. And speaking of closer to the U.S., there's our surface chart for this afternoon. One frontal system from Chicago down to the Oklahoma City area, the Panhandles, and the other end up into Ontario. Some severe weather out ahead of it, especially in Indiana and western Kentucky. Extensive rainfall, high precipitable water values all through the eastern U.S. and more severe weather going on from New Jersey down to Chesapeake Bay. Another frontal system up to the north in the Dakotas and out west. Quite a bit of heat, temperatures into the 110s in Arizona, but some relief on the way in the Pacific Northwest, and this will be quite a strong cold front. Across the northeastern U.S., Temperatures in the 70s and 80s, with 90s across Virginia into the D.C. area. We have severe thunderstorm watches in southeastern Pennsylvania, southern New Jersey, and the northern Chesapeake Bay area. All of that under a SPC slight risk, mostly for wind damage. We've had flash flood warnings in the Rochester area and northeastern Pennsylvania near Oil City. The Midwest under an enhanced risk for severe. We have got tornado watches out until I think uh, 8 p.m. Eastern for the entire Indianapolis area down through Paducah. And yeah, look at all those severe thunderstorm warnings all up and down this line, which is now moving into Ohio, approaching Dayton at this hour, and Cincinnati, and all the way down towards Louisville. There's all the warnings, advisories, and so on. Obviously, a lot of this is for severe weather, but I do want to bring this to your attention right there. That's going to be a heat advisory Thursday for Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, the Hudson River Valley of New York, and also Philadelphia. Heat indexes will be up near 100. So, yeah, be prepared for that. And as we go further to the west, wind advisories, and this big old purple thing, we'll talk about that shortly. For the southeastern region, typical June weather, this is kind of a Bermuda high tide pattern, and indeed out there in the Atlantic, not much precip. Extensive thunderstorm activity all through Florida up to Atlanta, over to Birmingham and Mississippi. Temperatures mostly in the 80s, but we do have a band of 90s from Florida into Virginia and some mid-90s from Orlando up to Columbia and Raleigh. Raleigh looking for 95 this afternoon. Flash flood warning in effect for central Alabama around Birmingham till 630 due to the effects of prolonged heavy rain that fell earlier this afternoon. In the southern plains, temperatures warming up to the 80s in the Panhandles, 90s from East Texas out to Lubbock, and 100s in the Rio Grande Valley and the Permian Basin as well. Heat advisories in effect for the Texas Big Bend this evening, temperatures up to 114 in some localized areas, and a few thunderstorms popping up around Tyler this afternoon, Longview, out into Louisiana. In the northern plains, quite pleasant. Temperatures in the 70s and 80s. Some more showers up there around Grand Forks out towards Aberdeen. 
changes are on the way, and I'll show you that. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and just go right to that. Yep, that big blob right there, that's going to be an extreme heat watch for this weekend covering Iowa, Nebraska, South Dakota, northern, well, actually all of Minnesota now. Heat indexes could run well over 100 and air temperatures 100 to 105 in the central plains area. Heat advisories all the way down towards Denver, central Nebraska, Friday and Saturday temperatures will be up to 100 with heat indexes around 100 to 105 in Nebraska. Clear skies across the southwestern U.S., warm conditions in the Rockies, 84 at Denver this afternoon, 80 in the Mountain Valleys, and 90s west of the Rockies and the Four Corners area. Looks like a few touches of wildfire smoke here and there uh, around just north of Silver City and just east of Cedar City, Utah. Temperatures, well, yeah, let's talk about that. 102 at El Paso this afternoon, 113 at Phoenix, 110 at Las Vegas, 107 for Tucson, and 113 for Palm Springs. Heat advisories run Thursday for Albuquerque, El Paso, and Deming. Temperatures will be up to 101 in central New Mexico, 106 around El Paso. And extreme heat warnings Thursday and Friday for the lower deserts. Uh, the eastern deserts in Arizona, including Phoenix and Tucson, temperatures will run 105 to 118. Extreme heat warnings in southern Nevada, the northern Mojave Desert, and numerous red flag warnings in effect all across the Great Basin area, Nevada, Utah, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday due to strong southwest winds gusting 35 to 45 miles an hour. The worst of it will be on Saturday. Not quite as severe in California, Although in the San Joaquin Valley, quite hot, upper 90s to 100, where we have the uh, marine layer, Los Angeles 73 and San Diego 74, a bit hotter in the inland areas. We've got a heat advisory for the Inland Empire, east of Los Angeles to the mountains, east of San Diego. Temperatures will be in the 90s to around 100. And in the Pacific Northwest, some very cool conditions flowing onshore west of the Cascades, looking for a high today of 72 at Portland, 69 at Seattle, with that storm track coming right on shore. Still hot east of the Cascades, upper 80s to low 90s, 94 for Boise and 92 for Salt Lake City. This weekend, we actually have a winter storm watch in the Lewis Range and Glacier National Park. We're talking Saturday afternoon, evening, and Sunday morning. There could be up to a foot of heavy wet snow above 6,000 feet. Some snow could come down into the valleys as low as 4,000 feet. So if you're going to be on the roads east of Kalispell, definitely monitor the forecasts. And don't use an app for that. Look at the weather service reports. They're going to be a lot more granular and actually assessed and reviewed by a human. Red flag warnings today in the Moses Lake, Wenatchee area of Washington and far southeastern Washington between Walla Walla and Lewiston. And rounding out that tour of weather, we go into the Pacific and we see that chunk of polar air right there outlined by the thickness field, the core of it off of British Columbia. Up in Alaska, some very warm weather. In fact, take a close look at that map right there. Thunderstorms near Point, I think that's Point Hope, and temperatures in the 70s in the Brooks Range. That spells massive snowmelt going on, and they've had heavy snow cover this past spring. So we have flood problems all through this area of the Brooks Range up to the North Slope. They're under a flood watch through this afternoon. There has been flooding and closures along the Dalton Highway up to Prudhoe Bay. Further out in Canada, warm conditions, parts of Yukon under a special weather statement for heat. Temperatures rising into the 80s from Carmax and Beaver Creek to Dawson, Mayo, Old Crow, and up the old Dempster Highway. Further south... Severe thunderstorm watches covering all of central and western Alberta and parts of northeastern British Columbia. Severe warnings have been posted northeast of Calgary, north of Rocky Mountain House, and around Edson, Alberta. Some of those storms producing large hail. Prince George, British Columbia, under a severe thunderstorm warning. A severe watch is out for the lower prairies between Winnipeg and Regina, due to the potential for hail and high wind. No warnings at this time. 
and a severe warning out in southwestern Ontario near Nelson Lake. As we go further east, rainfall warnings from North Bay out to the area north of Quebec City, one to two inches of rain forecast there. St. Catharines, well, it's further south, let me bring that down. St. Catharines, Kitchener, Waterloo under rainfall warnings for up to three inches of rain and a severe thunderstorm watch for far southwestern Ontario, London to Sarnia due to the potential for strong wind gusts. A quick check of the monsoon maps shows dry conditions with that heat wave underway. Some of that moisture will flood westward over the weekend into El Paso and Albuquerque. Those dew points coming up into the 40s and even the 50s by early next week. And there's 61 there for late Sunday. And you can see the extensive thunderstorm activity there, the Sierra Madre Occidental, up into the mountains around El Paso, not really infiltrating Arizona. And as we go up towards Wednesday and Thursday next week, mostly staying in New Mexico, very typical pattern for late June in that part of the country, and a few pulses trying to make it into southeastern Arizona late next week. And that is the picture there. Yeah, 56 there, being forecast. This is pretty far out, but that's the GFS for next Friday. And that's enough to support thunderstorms on the mountains and maybe a few out in the valleys. The precipitable water chart shows extensive tropical moisture from Texas up to the Midwest, the northeastern U.S., and the entire East Coast. Amounts as high as two inches. Again, this is precipitable water, not water on the ground. This is water in the troposphere. So this extends from Shreveport to Cincinnati, Paducah, two inches of potential precipitation if you squeezed all of that out completely from the vertical column. Yeah, not much change over the next few days, although we do clear out some of the moisture right there in the Midwest as some more cool air works southward. But not much relief in the Central Plains, plenty of moisture there, and that continues on into the weekend. And that's the last frame I have, but 1.5 to 2-inch precipitable water across the Great Lakes for Saturday. There's a quick look at the hemispheric pattern, a rather progressive flow across the U.S., a little bit further south than we typically see at this time of year. This extends across the northwestern U.S., bringing in that cool air. Some troughs dipping into the Midwest, bringing them plenty of precipitation and a rather strong Hudson Bay vortex up there. And looks like a little bit of blocking in between with that cutoff high up there in Alaska. And over the next 72 hours, it remains progressive. This trough digs into the West Coast area and into much of the Western U.S. over the weekend. There's the very last frame that I have there. Look at that, minus 25 Celsius at 500 millibars. So that's going to favor extensive cold core precipitation across that part of the country. Extensive ridging through the central and eastern U.S., and that spells hot weather, the center of that high across Mississippi, and that's pumping some of that tropical air northwest into New Mexico, helping to feed that monsoon pattern. And let's go ahead and run through that forecast going into tonight. This frontal system will cross Michigan into the eastern Great Lakes. And then for tomorrow, we're going to be looking at an extensive slight risk across the northeastern U.S., basically everywhere east of the Appalachians, except for Maine and Boston. The primary hazard will be strong convective wind gusts. An isolated tornado or large hail is possible. We go from bad to worse in the southwestern deserts, up to 116 at Phoenix and 113 at Tucson. That's just four to six degrees away from the all-time records. The heat starts building into the central plains, 90s from Texas to Nebraska, and they will be going from bad to worse also. Looking for 94 at Pierre, 98 at Rapid City, but... Just look what we have for Friday. We move forward and we get that strong downslope flow right there, thermal troughing from the Black Hills down to the High Plains. We're going to be looking at temperatures in the 100s from eastern Colorado, including Denver, out to South Dakota, Iowa, Nebraska, northwest Kansas, and temperatures as high as 104 at Rapid City, 103 at Pierre, and 105 at McCook and Imperial. The Storm Prediction Center has a slight risk for severe for northern Wisconsin, much of Minnesota, including 
uh, Minneapolis, St. Paul, and much of North Dakota ahead of this warm front. Supercells are possible with the development of a possible MCS going into the evening. So this graphic doesn't really show it, but we're going to be looking at that area right there. And you can see some of those storms popping up there on the model graphics. And it appears we've had some movement to the east into Ontario. For Saturday, day two of a severe heat wave into the north central U.S., basically the same situation we had on Friday. Temperatures well into the 100s from Denver to Rapid City and Sioux City and Omaha. Cold air spreads into Idaho and Nevada temperatures will be in the 50s and 60s through much of the Pacific Northwest, 68 for Reno, but still 83 at Salt Lake City. Low 80s for the San Joaquin Valley, heavily modified polar air shifting to the south, and some extensive heavy rains off the top of the map. Let me see if I can scoot the map up there. Up there in Alberta, yeah, look at that. Strong upslope, very rich moisture, all of that conducive to heavy flooding rains. As we go into Sunday, this system progresses eastward but starts losing steam as it modifies heavily and loses some of the upper air support. The heat wave will break up. 100s confined mostly from McCook to southeastern South Dakota, 90s elsewhere, and a very cold day for Montana, highs in the 30s in the mountains, with 50s in the valleys and 60s in eastern Montana. Also that winter storm watch that we talked about. This is going to be one of the coolest days of the week in the southwest deserts. Highs barely reaching the 100s, 94 for Las Vegas, 76 at Tonopah, and 72 for Salt Lake City. And quickly going into next week, Monday, heavily modified polar air working into the northern plains and just not much southward progress, but providing a pretty good boundary for precip. So that's good for the farming districts out there and just kind of a stagnant weather pattern developing as we go into the last week of June. And that's all I've got for this episode of Forecast Lab. The cross-section graphics are not available but I'll throw in some bonus charts, the Canadian graphics, and also the 850 millibar severe weather composite. So look for that after the credits. Hope you all have a great Wednesday evening, and we'll see you back here on Friday. Take care. Bye-bye.